keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hi there, Chris here from footballbetdata.com uh, with another video here that we're going to be um, taking you through some of the outputs that you can generate from football bet data <clears throat> and how you can take those to the next level of analysis. OK, um, so obviously we as a website, we provide all of the data for you. The data stored in behind the scenes. We give you the tools to be able to extract that data, filter that data, tailor it to how you need it uh, in, in, in various different outputs. Uh, and then your role is to, to, to analyze those, to look for trends and patterns that potentially not there from the naked eye, okay? So in this video, what we're gonna be looking at are, are teams that uh, one, um, throw away leads consistently, um, and, and equally teams that come from behind on a continual basis. And on top of that, we're also gonna be looking at teams that score late goals. So games where there's likely or potentially potential to be a, uh, a goal in the last 10 minutes. <clears throat> so to do that, what we're gonna do is use a couple of tools. So we're gonna use the example download uh, area of the site. Now this part of the site is absolutely free for anybody, be it guest, visitor, member, um, advanced member to access. These files are readily available for you to, to download and extract. And we're going to be using this bottom one here, FBD sequence. Um, I'm just going to output this one so you can see it on the screen. Um, it's actually pre-populated with some data from 2019 in there. So that can all be stripped out um, so you want to strip out the data up until where this black line is. So BS, you can take all of that information out and that will provide the framework for what we're going to look at here uh, in this video. Um, in true Blue Peter style, I have already provided a file, which is I've named FBD sequence trading. Um, and I've added a few additional columns to the end here. And this video will be walking you through what these columns do, how I created them, uh, and how they can lead to the analysis that we get at the end, okay? So the first thing we need to do is populate this file with data. Um, now, I'm gonna navigate back to the website because I did say we're gonna use a couple of tools. Um, so we need a data output. Now, the output sources, the main output sources here are head-to-head, -head, and obviously that is if you just want to compare two teams or you wanna look at one team's single history. Uh, we've got a separate video that covers that. Um, the other old two alternatives for more of an in-depth output are data, and, uh, data dashboard or fixtures and results. Now, essentially, you can get the same thing. Uh, th you can get the fixtures and results output from the data dashboard. You just need to ensure that you're, you're not filtering out any games. But the easiest way, if you want to get a bulk download uh, purely of the results uh, and, and fixtures with no filtering apart from the league and the season, is using fixtures and results. So in doing so, we're going to select the four main English leagues and the English conference for the current season, which is the 22-23 season. And we're going to export that to Excel by clicking here. And you can see that that has created, I guess, about two and a half thousand rows worth of data. Yep, just over two and a half thousand rows worth of data in a couple of seconds. We have that output. So really good. Now, what we need to do is highlight all of the data. We're going to use all of these columns uh, and the beauty is we can uh, arrow down to the end, copy that selection, and we can paste it as value straight into the spreadsheet because we know that the way this spreadsheet, the sequence spreadsheet has been set up is that the columns should all align. And there you go, right up to BS, we have uh, data populated. I'm gonna close down the results output because we don't need that one anymore. Now what we need to do is focus on the home and the away times columns. So. Like I said, we're going to be analyzing teams that make comebacks or throw away leads. So the specific area of focus here is going to be the timings of the goals. OK, now we have all these timings in the database, which is really good. But I'm just going to draw your eye to a couple of things here where you can see that goal times that have been scored in injury time contain this plus uh, in the um, characteristic here in the text string. So what we need is a numeric. So when we're looking at goal times, we need to know uh, which is the higher of the times, okay? So to do so, we need to strip out the plus uh, and the, the, the number of minutes in injury time. And that will be obviously half time and full time. There's a number of ways of doing it, but one of the quickest uh, is to go through and go to find and replace, uh, or you can click find and select here. And we can literally cycle through. So 
you know, we start on a, the highest number that we reasonably expect there to be a uh, an injury time goal. So I'm going to start on 20 minutes. And what we want to do is put that in find and we want to replace with nothing. Uh, it tells you there it didn't find anything. So we're going to scroll down and replace any for 19. There's nothing there. Um, now, this is quite a lot of injury time that we're um, applying here, but, the, you know, it's not uncommon. Uh, some games do, certainly since the World Cup, <laughs> they certainly see a lot more injury time being added in games these days. Um, so you could start as high as you like, really. Um, I'm going to cycle through. So it's not found anything yet. Uh, and there we go. We found that 12 minutes, there were two games that had a goal in with 12 minutes of injury time. Uh, nothing on 11 and two at 10 and then we get into single digits okay so like i said there are numbers with excel there are always numerous ways of doing things probably more robust ways if you wanted to write a bit of uh, visual basic code um, you can do search by filters as well but uh, this is a, a fairly quick robust way of uh, checking and replacing these pluses from the goal times so we're manipulating these uh, 92 replacements there and then finally one minute and what we're going to do is just do a, a quick find to see if there are any more pluses in here and that is all of it complete so that's good we've cleared out any of those pluses okay the next stage is breaking these goal times down so as you can see they're all contained within one text string and again there's numerous ways you can do this uh, but the quickest and easiest to demonstrate is probably just taking these to a separate page and we're going to paste these out as values and what we want to do is use the text to columns um, selection so we go to the data tab text to columns and then what we want to do is select delimited and we're going to select space and tab as the options if we select finish, you can see here that it's split all of these out, okay? Now, I've allowed for 12 columns worth of goals, so that's assuming a team doesn't, a home team or an away team does not score more than 12 goals, very unlikely. Um, and if they do, they're probably not coming, they're not throwing away a lead in, in, those, uh, in those games. So I'm gonna select 12 columns out, and we can see this in that box towards the top left there. And then I'm going to select down to the end, copy these, and we're going to go back to our sequence and I can paste these in. So these are the home goals. So you can see those are pasted in and my formula is populating already on the, in the green tabs there you can see, and I will be explaining those. We need to do the same for the away teams. So I can clear all this data down or I could use a new tab. I'm just going to reset it to the top. So we need the away goal times. We go back here, we paste as values. We go to data, text to columns, and it should have already remembered my settings, tab and space. I can click finish. And then we want to scroll across 12 columns, select shift control and arrow down, goes to the bottom of our data set. And we can do the same and paste in the goal times for the away team here, okay. And again, like you say, like I said, you can see data populating here. So moving across now, so we have our data up until CQ. And now what we have is some formula. Now I'm gonna show you here what we're, we're calculating. Uh, and this is the formula that, that I'm using in here. It may look fairly complex on, uh, on the naked eye, but it's basically checking uh, which team scored the first goal and what it made that score. So you can see here that it's looking uh, in um, columns BT to CQ, which are these ones here, home and away. It's looking to find the smallest number um, and then it's assigning a score to it. So it's saying the first goal that went in and in this game, there was only one goal, made it 0-1. Um, there's a couple of games that finished one nil here, but you can see this uh, game on line six. The first goal was an away goal, 30 minutes. The next goal made it 1-1, 72. And then the third goal made it 2-1 uh, on 90 minutes. Okay, so that is how the formula works. And again, I've dragged that across 
Um, so it's a simple matter of just dragging that across. Um, obviously, I don't need those borders in there, but that's how the formula is created. You can put that in column C R2 and you can drag it down and across and that will populate. Uh, as long as you've got it for your whole data set, you'll have all of those times and um, comebacks and score lines in there for each goal as they happened. Um, you can see here that <clears throat> we're actually at the point now where we've got games later this week that have not yet been played. Um, so the, the data obviously doesn't populate for games where we haven't had any goal times. Okay. So I'm going to scroll back to the top. Now you can pause the video if you wanted to replicate and copy these formulas. So they're there visible in the formula bar. Then what we've got here is the first goal and it's just looking at the minimum um, number that it finds in here. So it's showing you the first goal time was on the 18th minute. And then the next formula here, uh, we're looking at the formula in green that we've just created and I'm circling here with the mouse. So we're looking at the score here. Now what we're looking at here is what was the uh, result at that moment in time when that goal. So when the first goal went in, it was a, it was an away win. It was the game was being won by the away team. Now this one on line six that we looked at, the first goal uh, was scored by the away team. So the away team were winning. The next goal, uh, it was, made it one all. So it was a draw at that stage. And then the third goal um, was giving the home team the lead and, and that's how it stayed. So you can see here where the sequences of goals that have gone in, what outcome that had on the match result. So you can see in this line 15, uh, it, what, the first goal made it 1-0, second goal made it 2-0. Now the third goal was scored by the away team, but the home team were still winning. So that is what we're looking at here. Uh, and then the next goal made it 2-2, uh, so that was a draw. And then the final goal was scored by the away team uh, to complete the comeback and make it 3-2. Now again, there's the formula that can be dragged. And if I drag that across, um, that automatically populates. So you only need to create that formula in that first cell as it is on the screen there. And it can be dragged down and dragged across uh, all the way to uh, column DV. Okay. Now here we have some more analysis on the home team in blue. Uh, and what we're doing is seeing if there was a comeback. So I'm gonna to scroll to line eight here because we've identified a comeback with a one. So you can see here that the formula is saying uh, if the first goal meant that the team was uh, winning, the home team was winning, if that's correct, then if the next goal equal a draw, so i.e. that the away team had come back to equalize, then put a one. If it didn't happen, then put a zero. So you can see here again on line 30, where we had the away team completing that, um, that's, that comeback from being two nil down, we've got the one in there, okay? Um, and what we do is it, it, it looks at the um, previous cell to see if there was a one in there as well. And again, this can be dragged down and across. Uh, sorry, it can't be dragged down and across because the formula is slightly different here uh, because this is the first one. This one can be dragged across. Um, so you need to ensure you've got this formula in DW. And then when we're looking at DX, it's slightly different uh, because we're taking into account the next goal. So the first goal obviously can't be a, an equalizing goal. Um, but this one, the second goal onwards can be. So you need that column in DW and then in DX all the way across to EK, uh, you need this column and dragged across, okay? And the same for the away team. So that form is gonna be slightly different. So it's looking at the same thing. Was the first goal scored by the away team? If so, was the next goal a draw uh, or a goal to equalize, make the game a draw at that stage? Then we've got some further analysis on whether the home team have thrown away a lead. So we're basically looking at this data range here. I'm just gonna select that. It looks at that last cell to see if there, if there was a one in there. So this is a rolling one all the way across. So it didn't mean that the 15th goal made it a draw. It means that somewhere in this 
uh, data set here, there was a one and we've stopped because there has been a comeback in that game. We're not counting the number of times a team's come back. So if it went 1-0, 1-1, 2-1, 2-2, 3-2, 3-3, we're not counting that as a three. We're just looking binary to see has the home team thrown away a lead at any point in that game. Um, and that's the formula in there. And then the away team, very similar. We're looking at that last column to see is it greater than one? If it is, put a one. Um, because we only need to see binary. Yes, there was a, a lead thrown away by the away team, or no, there wasn't one or a zero. Then looking at the uh, last 10 minutes of the game. So we're looking to see in the time, goal times uh, column that we'd pasted in, how many occasions there was a number greater than or equal to 80 minutes. So the last 10 minutes of the game. Uh, and we're doing a count ifs there. And then we can do the same again, which focuses on the away team. Did they score in the last 10 minutes? Now, if we go down here, we can see there's a one in both of these columns. So if I select that row and scroll across, you can see that both teams did score in the 90th minute in that game. Uh, similar formula here to see if the um, away um, away team conceded, um, sorry, this is the home team conceded, this is the away team scored or the away team conceded. So in this game, there's a four in each because the home team scored and they conceded. So there's, there's, a, sub, there's a total of four uh, because that occurrence ticked every one of those boxes. Uh, and then we just have a simple count. So we'll just put a one in to signify that the game has been played. Um, and we can actually take that out for these games just going to scroll up to the next game, which is the Cholton Wiccan game. And we can take those ones out. We don't need to, we're not counting those as games played because they haven't been played yet. So there's quite a lot to take in there, but that is the formula that I have used uh, when determining how we uh, interrogate whether a, a team makes comebacks or throws away leads. Okay. So it's not, like I said, it's not going to be something that's apparent to the naked eye. It may be that if you have a favourite team, you have that perception that they do continually throw away leads away from home or they do make comebacks at home. But that perception might be blurred by that favouritism or bias that you have about your own team. Um, you won't necessarily know uh, the occurrences for other teams. So this allows you to analyse that data uh, so you can look at it in a snapshot. Um, so what I'm going to do in the next part of this video is how we can take this data that we've created, how we can turn it into something meaningful, meaningful with our analysis. OK, so you can see here down the bottom we have home and away and actually you can discount these home goals because this is where I've just done some previous pasting, um, which is the same as I did on sheet one and uh, sheet one in this video. So I can delete that one. This is where I've, I've previously dumped goal times. But we have home and away tabs and a sheet three, which I haven't actually named yet, a bit lazy. Um, but pivot tables already included in here. And I'm just going to refresh this one. Uh, and I'm just going to show you what we have in here as the makeup of the pivot table. So we're referencing the sequence um, sheet all the way across. And we've put in there the home team. And then we have right down at the end the... Um, the home played. So we're counting the number of times the home team has played. Um, and then we're counting the throwaway leads. So we're saying uh, how many times has that team at home thrown away a lead? So we're counting in there. That's what the pivot table is adding up. How many times have they come back from a lead? Um, so that's where the away team has thrown away that lead. Uh, and then we're looking at how many times they've scored in the last 10 minutes conceded in the last 10 minutes. Remember, this is at home only. And then we're looking at a throw, a throw away rate, which is basically a percentage of two divided by 19 and how many times they've come back. So that's 26% of home games. At some point, Accrington have come back. Uh, done some further calculations here just to say how many comebacks there are in total. Uh, late goals at home, late goals away, and the percentage of late goals as well in games. Okay, so this is the home team. Now we can sort this. So you can use your pivot table to sort if you want to look at 
let's have a look at the comeback from leagues, uh, leads. Um, options, we're going to say descending. So you can see here that York and Maidstone are the teams at the top here that have come back from Leeds at home this season. Um, Portsmouth, Torquay, seven times. So you can see here there's quite a significant um, case for looking at those teams and thinking, well, if they were playing at home and they fell behind, you'd have some confidence that at some stage in the game they would come from behind uh, to to, to equalise. And it may be that they've done that more than once. Like I said, we're only capturing the, the account of games that that has happened in. Um, you can sort again by other uh, features. So if you wanted to see um, how many times they scored late goals as the home team, uh, you can see here. Uh, hang on. Let me, why is that not? Uh, once scored. Do, scored last 10. So I selected the wrong. So you can see here that Plymouth, Burnley, Sheffield Wednesday, Wrexham. So no coincidence, those teams are all at the top end of their respective league, leagues. They've scored a lot of late goals and they haven't really conceded many. They've certainly outscored the, the conceded rate um, at, the, at the, uh, in, in their home games this season. Looking at the away team, it's exactly the same. So again, you can see, so this is sorted alphabetically, but we can sort... Uh, if we wanted to see the comeback from league leads uh, descending order, so since there's a clutch of teams here who uh, away from home have come back from leads seven times. Stoke, interestingly, seven times they've come back from a lead lit from being behind, but once they're ahead, they haven't thrown away a lead. So again, that sort of information. Stoke's next game, for instance, they go one 0 up away from home. You've got confidence that eighteen. Uh, sorry, 19 times this season, um, they've they've never surrendered a lead away from home. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but it gives you some statistical, historical confidence that the, the team are quite good at going ahead uh, and maintaining that lead and, and not surrendering it. Um, and again, you can look at other aspects um, of the pivot table, uh, teams that have conceded late, for instance, so you can see Burton here, they have conceded 10 times uh, in, the, in the last 10 minutes of away games this season, Reading, Bournemouth as well. Um, so it's quite interesting. You've got all of that information at your fingertips here in a handy pivot table. Now that's the way I've displayed it. You can display it and put your own calculations in uh, however, however suits your needs. Uh, and finally, the sheet three, what I've done is I've put in some calculations here to look at um, home team performance. So this is where you can match up a team if you wanted to have a look at the upcoming games. So let's pop uh, let's pop down to the end of the results and let's pick up some of these games that are going to be taking place this weekend. So let's just focus on uh, League One. So select those games that are taking place on Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna paste these in here. So you can see here that the comeback uh, home comeback percentage of Charlton, away comeback percentage of Wickham. So I've just added the two together, which gives a, a comeback percent chance. So the highest here is Portsmouth Port Vale. So that's saying that in just over a quarter of Portsmouth home games, if they've fallen behind, they've come back uh, and bang on a quarter of Port Vale's away games where they've fallen behind, they've come back. Um, so there's a, there's a likelihood in that game that whoever takes the lead at some stage, uh, there, there might be a comeback from, from the opposition team. Uh, then we've got the late goals at home, uh, late goals away. And again, I've just added the two together. And again, it's the Portsmouth game that gives the highest um, percentage there. So it, again, it might be that even going into the last 10 minutes, um, there's, there's still hope that there'll be another goal of some, store, some sort and potentially a comeback goal. You can look on the flip side of it as well and look at the lower comeback chance. So you've got MK Dons here. They've only come back uh, from a, from falling behind in a game, uh, 8% of the games this season. Uh, and Peterborough versus Derby, there's only, they've both scored relatively low amount of uh, late goals in their games as well, okay? 
So as I said, this was uh, just intended to give you a flavor um, of what you can do with Excel, uh, with some of the data outputs, with some of the free example files, how you can take that level of analysis to the next level fairly easily. Um, like I said, I'm not putting this here to say, here you go, go and do this and, and, and use this this weekend. It's giving you a visual indication uh, of where there are patterns and trends using our data outputs in a fairly simple fashion.